Chapter 47 Worry Later Ezra slices through another vampire with his ice blade. A permanent frown settled into his features. Layla trails behind him and states, I don't understand their purpose. They don't need one. They're just rogues belonging to Ryu's army. They obey without question. She picks up the pace as Ezra leaps at another vampire, decapitating them in one swift motion and watching as they dissipate into a pile of ash. Layla asks the ice-wielding vampire, Why doesn't he just show himself? We know he's the one behind all of this. Before she can utter another word, Ezra yanks the girl beside him as Ryu appears in front of them with a smug grin. It seems your senses have gotten better with her blood, little Ezra. He holds his blade out to the vampire lord and glares. I've been given orders to dispatch you. You've caused enough trouble for the world. Ryu grins maliciously, eyes flickering over to Layla for the briefest moment. She steps behind Ezra, and Ryu chuckles darkly, answering, Kill me? You may recall the last time you fought me I put a hole in your chest. I allowed you to live then, little brother. His eyes become cold and he continues icily. You will not live this time though and your woman will be mine to do with whatever I please. Ezra murmurs to the woman behind him. Find somewhere safe. I will come get you as soon as I'm done here. She nods hesitantly and as she makes her way towards a familiar building, Ryu bolts forward swinging a blade at Ezra's chest. He quickly jumps to the side dodging the slash as the ground behind him is indented with a curve where the blade's wind had struck. Ryu's eyes light up with maniacal joy. He lashes out again, aiming for Layla's retreating form, but Ezra jumps in front of the blade, pressing into his weapon with his own and blocking the sword's wind with his body, a bloody cut climbing across his torso. Foolish! Do you think you can keep her safe for long? Ryu asks, pushing against Ezra's blade. Ezra grunts, not bothering with the response as he finally repels Ryu with enough strength. He takes the chance and dashes towards Ryu's form, ice shooting out from his blade and into the vampire lord's chest. He stumbles for a moment, a look of surprise across his face. Ezra's eyes narrow. Anger flares within Ryu's form as he rips out one of the many icicles in his chest and flings it back in Ezra's direction, grazing his cheek as the man dodges the attack. Ryu questions arrogantly, Shall we see what your little girlfriend's power is capable of? Before Ezra can answer, a dark light forms, wrapping around Ryu's arms like a tight snake. He lashes it at Ezra, but hits the ground instead of his target, which dissolves into small particles. Several slashes launch at the man in rapid motion. Difficult for the naked, human eye to follow, black particles forming across the destroyed earth as he dodges each attack with grace. He bursts forward with speed and clashes his weapon against the light-engulfed sword, but a glint flickers in Ryu's red orbs as he does. He presses the sword against Ezra's blade and the dark light begins coiling around the icy weapon until it completely shatters and latches onto Ezra's wrist. He grunts in pain at the electric shocks going through his body and jerks out of the vice grip of the light. Ryu grins. It's quite painful, isn't it? Even for a vampire, it's deadly. Ezra scowls and asks, aggression seeping into his voice as his amethyst eyes flicker red. What have you done to it? His grin widens, revealing those long fangs. It's intriguing what a little bit of darkness in her heart can do. I simply learned to manifest it into a weapon after her most recent episode. Ezra's eyes darken and lashes out at the vampire lord angrily, swiping a clawed hand downward, eyes shooting outwards at the man. Ryu swats away the attack as though it were a mere insect and leaps in front of Ezra, throwing a jab in his face. The blow startles the vampire, sending him flying into one of the many ruined buildings of the campus. He coughs out in pain as the dust settles, a pipe running through his abdomen. Ryu appears in front of the man and states as he steps on an injured leg, grinding his boot into the wound, You are weak, Ezra. You're not strong enough to take me on especially with the number of weapons I feasted on. Ezra growls in frustration and pain, but shoots an ice shard from his palm at the vampire above him, prying himself from the piping and debris. He rises to his feet and glares at Ryu. Drawing his sword once more, he leaps at the man, blades clashing and sparks flying as they hurl their weapons back and forth in a flurry of attacks. His sword pierces the vampire lord's chest after one final blow, and he drags the ice weapon up through his throat, ripping and curving the blade to decapitate the lord. Ryu's eyes are alight with surprise and anger as his head lands across the ground, separated from his body. Ezra frowns. Despite his body lying there on the ground, Ezra couldn't help but be wary of the man. He shakes his head. He had to find Layla first and worry about Ryu's corpse later. Chapter 48 Over she was supposed to be hiding but felt the tug in her chest dragging her to the imposing bell tower situated in the middle of the campus. 
Red light surrounds the foreboding building, and she suspects the glyph is beneath its placement. She approaches it slowly, holding a hand out to the glow. Before she can cast her hand into the light, though a firm appendage snatches it, halting her actions. Don't touch that, Layla. She turns to Ezra, noticing his battered frame first and quickly asks as she holds her wrist out. What? What did he do to you? Drink my blood. It will help you heal. He doesn't deny her command and pulls her close to his frame, fangs immediately sinking into her neck none too gently. Layla gasps at the strength in his bite, his fangs seeping deeper than usual, almost touching bone. Tears swell in her eyes as she grips what's left of his shirt, but she doesn't cry out. Her breaths become labored over the passing minutes, and her knees grow weak. Still, she trusts the man before her to know his and her limits. Sensing her escalating collapse, Ezra rips himself away from her neck, the wounds on his body slowly closing. Layla questions, breathless and dizzy from the blood loss. Did you get enough? Ezra shakes his head and replies, I'm sorry, love. She takes a small breath and counters quickly. We don't have time for that. Are you well enough to fi? A blast of dark light travels rapidly in their direction, dissolving the ground they just stood on as Ezra snatches Layla, leaping away from the spot. He sets her down and glares in front of him as the dust settles, revealing Ryu rubbing his neck with a pointed look directed at the couple. He states coolly, You'll have to do better than decapitation to kill me, little general. Layla gasps in shock, staring at Ezra. You did what to him? Why is his head attached? Ryu smirks and responds calmly, shrugging. Oh, weapon, you have a lot to learn about royal vampires. We never just die. You, on the other hand. He pauses as he takes a threatening step towards her. Ezra stands in front of her protectively and murmurs loud enough for her to hear. Go hide. Ryu glares and snaps bitterly, waving a hand in their direction, black light plowing their way. Not this time, you little wench. They have very little time to dodge the attack, and Layla's eyes snap shut. She holds her hands out in front of her, and a shield of golden light forms, blocking their view and competing against the destructive force. Ezra's eyes flash between Ruby and Amethyst, and he holds tight to Layla, whispering into her ear, I've got you love. She cracks an eye open, and Ezra immediately leaps to another spot away from Ryu, who is glaring fiercely at the two. Ryu spits irritably, enough, I'm done playing games, you will get out of my way. His hands wave over the grassy ground. Before either can react, black vines sprout from the earth behind them, wrapping around Ezra first and then lashing out at Layla. He quickly shouts as the black weeds begin engulfing the vampire. Run, Layla! She hesitates at first, but upon seeing him completely swallowed whole by the plants, her feet force her to bolt in a random direction. She had to get somewhere safe. Tears swell in her eyes as she thinks about what happened to Ezra. Was he still alive or was he being slowly suffocated? Would he survive? She shakes her head. He had to live. He would be fine. She had to trust in him as much as he had faith in her. She would find a way to defeat Ryu. But how? Her mind panicked as she ran. Her feet brought her to the music hall. Maybe? She mutters to herself out of breath from her sprint. A voice startles her from behind. Maybe what weapon? Layla whips around, backing into the brick wall of the building as Ryu corners her. His eyes are fierce and glowing angrily. He snaps coldly. I asked you a question. He snatches her wrist before she can go any further, and she thrashes wildly in his hold. Let go. His hand cuts across her cheek, sending her into a dazed silence. You will do as you're told, or else the rest of your friends will end up like your lover. For a moment it seemed to work, threatening her, but then she comes back to her senses and places a palm to his face, shouting as a brilliant light shimmers from her hand. I said let go of me. He cries out in pain, his hold slipping on the woman, and she bolts for the music hall, locking the door behind her, not that it would do much to halt his progress. She had to try though, making her way towards the only place that seemed to make sense, she threw wide the violin studio's doors. Grabbing one of the many cases, she hurries as she opens an instrument container and pulls out the bow and violin, quickly placing the weapon to her chin and shoulder, she begins playing a melody. Shallow tones echo about the room first, the light a small dim. She draws the bow downwards, hitting a high note and going back down in a sort of Celtic-styled melody. The light glows brighter and spreads like a minefield around the room. The door is kicked in minutes later, a non-healing Ryu standing there with a burnt cheek. His eyes widen before turning into a cold glare. He takes a step forward and states as she continues playing, You will not kill me. You are weak. Layla takes a hesitant step back, the light dimming as he walks into the room. 
She quickly pulls her mind together, and a harsher tone escapes the violin. The melody moves faster, and the room glows bright. Ryu growls, reaching for her, but she jumps back, instrument still in hand as she plays louder. The light flashes like a bomb, and she hears his scream. She quickly scampers around his twitching frame as the place goes off like a set of strobe lights in a rave. She still felt the tug in her chest and finds herself back at the clock tower with the light shooting up from the glyph. She places a hand into the glow. A hand tugs her out of it, and she sees Ryu's angry form attempting to pull her from it. Layla quickly swipes at him with her free hand, noticing her new claws as golden light spews from them. Ryu growls furiously, releasing her at once. The moment he lets her go, Layla steps into the light and feels the world go blank. Her mind hazes in and out of reality. She can faintly hear the sound of music playing and follows its soothing tune without thought or reason. As she comes to her destination, a familiar figure stands there clad in all white, playing a violin. She stops before the man and questions weakly. What's going on? Ezra doesn't speak though, just continues to play the instrument. She places a hand to the fretboard to halt the music and asks with urgency etched into her tone as she begins to recall her situation. What is this place? He pulls a violin from nowhere and places the bow and instrument into her hands. Smiling at her, his eyes close, and he begins playing the four-stringed instrument once more as though she hadn't disturbed him at all. Layla frowns but puts the violin to her chin nonetheless and begins playing, following his lead. The melody is soft and gentle, flowing like a calm ocean at low tide. She could almost taste the sea salt tantalizing her tongue, as she continues to play the soothing melody. A bright light glows flowing around the two in various patterns and moving to the music. The next few notes hit high, startling her mind. She stares at Ezra, whose eyes are still closed. She follows the pace as it picks up, and she recalls what she was doing prior to this engagement. She had to deal with Ryu. Playing with all her heart, the light intensifies, glowing a brilliant blue. A wave pulsates from the instruments. A scream echoes in the distance and Ezra stops his playing, eyes opening, and his frame fades into darkness. Layla blinks and finds herself back on the campus in front of the bell tower. The night sky is normal and Ryu is nowhere to be seen. Ashes remain where he once stood. She hears a familiar and comforting voice from behind speak. You did it. Layla turns on her heels to Ezra. Tears fall down her eyes as she answers with a smile, hugging the man tight. It's over. Chapter 49 Haley Epilogue Haley pats down the dress while staring at herself in the tall mirror. The sweetheart neckline frames her torso while the tulle skirt flares outward. She was on edge. She takes a breath and states, This is nerve-wracking. Layla laughs lightly and replies, You're gonna ruin the makeup if you keep making that face. Besides, this is a happy day for you. Haley turns to the woman holding the bouquet of white flowers and wearing a flattering one-off-shoulder, oceanic blue dress and asks, What if he doesn't like the dress? Layla gapes at Haley and responds firmly, Then I'll roast him with a song. This brings a small smile to the younger woman's mouth, and she grasps the skirt of the long white dress and questions, You're sure it's not too much? Her eyes narrow and she remarks with a light smack to her friend's arm, It's your wedding day. Stop worrying so much. Go out there and shine with the confidence of a vampire huntress. Haley nods once and watches as Layla leaves the room. She turns back to the mirror staring at herself again. She takes another breath and grabs the skirt, raising it enough for her to move without tripping over it. It was time for her to walk the aisle, and she would hold it together. She exits the large room set up for her prepping and makes her way down a small corridor. Haley could hear the music slowly playing, and at her appearance it quickly changed. Numerous guests watch as she keeps pace with the beat, until she arrives at the altar where Mamoru stands with a soft smile. She can't help the blush that paints her cheeks. She had never seen him smile in such a way before. He was always so stiff with his emotions and rarely let them truly show. Haley casts her gaze towards her feet, shyness etching its way into her frame. The man before her had yet to say a word. Did he really need to, though? Surely his grin had said it all, but what if he... No. She had to stop thinking so negatively. This was her wedding day after all. If he didn't approve of her, they wouldn't have been together for a year now. Her mind wanders as the preacher begins his speech. Had it already been a year since they were together? Just a few months ago they were dealing with the threat of Ryu and his plan to ruin the world, and only a couple of months prior to that did she sleep with Mamoru. At first, there weren't any true feelings, but the more she spent time with the vampire, the more she felt herself growing attached to him. He even ditched his concubines for her. Miss Haley? She looks to the preacher in confusion. He asks once more. 
Do you take this man to be your husband? Haley blushes and nods her head rapidly. Eyes, Ido. He smiles and continues. Then I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss your bride. Mamoru wastes no time, grabbing Haley by the waist and plunging his lips onto hers. Her cheeks redden with all the guests present, vampire and human, but she melts into his touch as his hands comb through her long locks, tossing the small veil to the side. Little giggles escape her as Mamoru pulls away, and she states with a laugh, that veil was expensive. He murmurs as he takes her hand and lightly tugs her to the center of the ballroom they were in, preparing for their first dance. It's fine. Are you ready? Haley nods her head in response to the question. Mamoru casts his gaze towards the quartet expectantly. On his cue, a slow song begins to play from the four stringed instruments. The king wastes little time and guides Haley as they waltz across the floor, his left hand taking hold of her right and his other settling just above her waist. Mamoru spins her out, his hand never leaving hers as he pulls her back in his direction guiding her into a smooth dip. Her cheeks redden as he brings her to his chest, lips hovering above her own. A smirk forms across his mouth as she seals the distance between them. As the music continues to play, other couples begin to join the dance floor. Haley's eyes trace the crowd for a moment, smiling as she sees a blushing Layla holding tightly to a smirking Ezra. She was happy for herself but also glad for her friend and roommate. She never expected her life would turn out this way. So much had happened over the last year. All she had wanted was to become a special education teacher, but then her roommate threw a curve ball at her. Haley didn't regret any of it though. She was happy to have met Layla, which led to her meeting the king of vampires, her now husband. Husband. The word felt foreign to her but she didn't dislike it. Haley focuses on the vampire before her and questions just loud enough for him to hear. Children are possible, right? He chuckles holding her close and answers, Of course. Do you want them? Haley blushes but nods. Ido. He presses his lips to hers and responds, Then you shall have them. Chapter 50 Epilogue Layla Layla sits in the chair, legs pulled to her chest, thinking. A small frown paints her face. The door to the office opens and shuts, and Ezra sits across from her, asking calmly as he glances down at the stack of papers on his desk. What is it, love? I don't know what to do. He raises a brow. About. Layla huffs. It's just. What am I supposed to do now? Haley is married to the Vampire King. We defeated the big bad. There's no way I can go back to normalcy. His eyes flicker for a moment and he questions simply, Who says you have to? Her cheeks redden in embarrassment. She releases the hold on her legs, allowing them to rest on the floor beneath her. I suppose you're right. Ezra scribbles a note across one of the many essays he has to grade and replies, You can travel with me if you'd like. She blinks several times, staring at him as though he had two heads. Layla asks, attempting to hide the anxiety brewing in her chest. You're leaving. He pauses in his work, eyes gazing into her honey-brown hues. This position was only temporary, Layla. I am the general of a vampire military. I must travel to survey the army's many battalions and make sure they're functioning properly. Sorrow fills her chest. Oh, how long will you be gone or will you return? His brows furrow and he asks approaching her, confusion evident on his face. You do not wish to go? She hesitates under his stare, but finally she gives in and responds, I don't know what I want, Ezra. I haven't finished college. What would I do anyways while you're out busying yourself with the army? You could work on your art, love. I know you have a knack for it. You also don't have to stop your schooling. Technology is a beautiful thing. He answers calmly. She blushes at his proximity and replies, attempting to change the subject. You should finish grading. He smirks down at her, his fangs grazing her neck and causing her to stiffen. Ezra asks with a gentle kiss to her exposed flesh. And if I choose not to listen? Layla pleads weakly. Please, Ezra, not here. Someone might come by and... He covers her lips with his own, holding her captive in the office chair. He murmurs as she stifles a moan as he slips a hand beneath her skirt and rubs her sensitive spot. Let them hear. You belong to me. Layla groans, tossing her head back as Ezra continues, his ministrations becoming focused on teasing her. I want to hear you say it, love. You belong to me. A whimper falls from her mouth. She was so hot with his actions. He was only using one hand to torment her. She knew what he was capable of, though. He could do so much more. He has done much more. A second finger slips into her beneath the lacy underwear she wore, joining in on the slow pumping. His thumb rubs over her clit 
and she attempts to close her legs in a vain effort to stop the torture, a quiet moan escaping her mouth. Ezra nibbles on her neck and murmurs, I want to hear it, Layla. Then, I'll please you like no other. She pants lightly and asks, Here? We can't. You can't. What if someone, ah, uh, hears? He growls, tugging on her top. Like I said, let them. I want them to know you're mine. Her face reddens further, the shade of a dark cherry, and she tugs the man closer to her frame, beginning to unbutton his black top. Her hands rove over his chest as he continues his faithful ministrations, earning quiet mules of pleasure from the woman. The small groans weren't what he wanted, though. He wanted her to scream his name like she had done in the palace. He yearned for her to be completely his and only his. His eyes shimmered red, and he growled. Layla captures his lips in a passionate kiss searing with desire. She groans at his touch but manages to pry his hand away. Ezra stares at her, lust and blatant want filling those flashing hues of amethyst and ruby. Without missing a beat, she removes her underwear, tossing them to the side and asks as she breathes against Ezra's chest, fighting for control. You want this, right? Layla presses herself against his crotch and feels him stiffen for the briefest moment. He groans and remarks as he guides her to the desk, bending her forward and pushing the skirt up. You little vixen. I've told you what I wanted. She casts a sidelong glance at the man above her and states softly, Then make me. His amethyst eyes shift to a brilliant red, and he swiftly undoes his pants, sliding into her with ferocity. Her body trembles at his touch, each thrust meaningful and swift. She bit her lip, forcing the moans to remain at bay for a time until he hit her just right. She could only collapse under his hard thrusts, mules escaping her. Her cries went on for several minutes until she finally came undone, walls clenching tight around him as he spilled into her. She breathes out softly, I'll go. Ezra scowls, that isn't what I want to hear. Layla chuckles breathlessly, I'm yours, Ezra.